Back at the Barnyard was a masterpiece, so let's talk about it. Don't you know it, don't you know it's just the way we animals roll? Back at the Barnyard was a series created by Nickelodeon based on the 2006 movie they released. This show aired September 29, 2007 to September 18, 2010 on Nickelodeon for only two seasons, which was honestly insane now that I think about it. This show was absolutely amazing. So how did it only get two seasons? Incredible shows ending too early was a common theme back in the day I noticed, especially for Nickelodeon. The same thing happened to Jimmy Neutron, which is honestly sad because these shows were before their time. Back at the Barnyard revolves around Otis and his friends as they go on these crazy adventures and get into all type of scenarios, all while still trying to keep their secret away from humans. And if you watched this show growing up, do you know their main problem was always this nosy neighbor, Miss Beatty, who has no life and is is always trying to get evidence that the barnyard animals can talk and I freaking loved every minute of it. Miss Beatty was just about the only one who truly knew the animal's secret but of course every time she gets any type of evidence that the animals could talk something would always go wrong to spoil her plans or oh look a cute little puppy where they would just knock the lady out. Actually, that's a running joke throughout this entire series. The animals knocking people out, giving them concussions after they witnessed them talking. It's freaking hilarious. And Mrs. Beatty's nephew, who everyone referred to as Snotty Boy, appears throughout the series whenever his parents drop him off and his aunt and uncle babysit him. And Snotty Boy just always has Miss Beatty fooled, thinking he was just a clueless, kind-hearted kid. But in reality, this man was just a overweight, dim-witted, selfish, spoiled little brat who got everything he wanted and he also had this funny laugh <laughs> It was annoying in a good way because it was hilarious and we also see throughout the series that Snotty Boy enjoyed torturing the animals with his two knucklehead best friends and he even picks on his uncle but he only does this when his aunt Mrs. Beatty isn't around. He even mocks his parents often as well. This man was just a menace. Now the main character was Otis of course and yes we all see Otis has an udder despite the fact that male cows don't have them. I guess the writer was like f*** it. Most people won't know anyways. <laughs> Now we all know Otis was a party animal and him and his friends were basically the animal versions of jackass. No, like literally. These guys had so many bloopers. And Otis kind of reminded me of Roger from American Dad because he had so many different personas he would play all throughout the series. One of them being Cowman, which was from the episode Cowman and Rat Boy. He also appears as Cowman in the one hour special, Cowman the Uttered Avenger. <laughs> Some of his other personas were Professor X position. He also played as this politician named Ned Bovin. He played as a news anchor and he even played as a golfer. Golfer Heifer Woods, which was a parody of Tiger Woods. My guy Otis was just mad talented out here. Next we had my guy Pip, who was the best friend of Otis. And I always peeped that Pip spoke with a slight Mexican accent, which just made his character even better because it was low-key random. Pip had this huge crush on Bessie, another cow in the show. But we all know this man is just too tiny for her and we see throughout the show he's always hitting on her but he's always getting rejected at the same time now pip also has another persona of course which was rat boy the sidekick of cowman you won't see pip involved in all the crazy adventures the guys go on at least not as much as freddy peck and pig but my guy comes along for the ride sometimes and of course how could we forget abby which i should mention in the incredible movie they made for this series abby and otis end up having this beautiful baby cow I after almost dying from those vicious wolves. She was also allergic to petunias for some odd reason. Bruh. Then we had Pig, who was the only one actually named after his own species. And Pig was just that, a pig. He had an appetite for just about anything, as you can see. Pig was this lovable character who was always going on these crazy adventures with the rest of the animals. Actually, Pig dressed up as a human more times than Otis did in this series, surprisingly. And he had this other persona which he called 
called Mr. Hamtastic. <laughs> Pig also had a pet skunk, which he named Skunky, and he was oddly obsessed with unicorns for some odd reason. One thing's for sure though, Otis and Pig made their first appearance in the pilot episode of Planet Sheen as cameos, but I honestly didn't remember this. Maybe because I tried my hardest to get rid of any memories that revolve around me watching that awful show Planet Sheen, bruh. And another thing I just loved about this show was the relationship they gave Freddy and Peck. We all know Freddy was this crazy ferret who was a bit dim with it, who was the best friend of Peck. And Peck was this smart chicken who hung around the guys and was pretty much the easiest target for any enemy because he was on the weaker side. And for some odd reason, even though Peck is really intelligent, he completely ignores Freddy's uncontrollable desire to eat him because Freddy loved fried chicken before they became best friends. So this was a really funny and interesting thing to witness because this man always had to fight his urges and would often show jesters like he was going to devour this guy. Just crazy. And Freddy was somewhat illiterate and suffered from paranoid delusions. My guy was walking around having sleep paralysis 24 7. That's got to be horrible. Peck on the other hand was more accident prone because I swear I've lost count on how many times this man was hurt in this show. Those weak little chicken bones. <laughs> and might I mention Freddy and Peck also had superhero alter egos as well. Freddy's being paranoid man and Peck's being the green rooster. Yeah more like the get in that frying pan. Bruh. And another character I'm sure we all loved was Duke. I swear that scene of Duke eating that peanut butter will always be hilarious to me. But yeah, Duke was this sheepdog that was in charge of the farmer's flock of sheep. But the crazy thing about this is that these sheep possessed really high IQs and this man Duke was clearly no match for the intellect possessed by the sheep he herds. He was known as the character always trying to be in charge of everything, when in reality he was one of those characters that was always messing things up. Like I'm sure we all remember in the Barnyard movie when Ben died, Ben being Otis's dad, which was super sad by the way. Duke tries to step up and take charge of the barnyard, but none of the other animals saw him fit for this role. They wanted Otis to step up and take charge, which he eventually does in this movie when they kick the crap out of these wolves. It was very satisfying to see, and the thing about Duke was that he wasn't really into all this crazy stuff that Otis and the guys would usually indulge in, so this will lead to him feeling left out, because all he really wanted to do majority of the time was just play ball. I mean, he could have easily just hung out with some of the other barnyard animals but we all know Otis was the most popular barnyard animal so he wanted to hang with him. And then we had Bessie who I can admit I wasn't the biggest fan of. She just comes off as that mom character you know. She played no dramatic roles in the show it just seems like she was around to only insult Otis. Hey dummy moron 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 sugar ray loser moron sir Isaac moron moron because we all know she finds him childish and idiotic. Yeah this was the cow my guy Pip had a crush on. But like I said earlier, she didn't really give my guy any play. And might I mention Bessie doesn't really go on any adventures and doesn't really have many personas like the rest of the animals. She's just a boring sassy character to me. Sorry, not sorry. And last but not least, I just had to mention Miles. Miles played a very important role in this show. Being that he was one of the oldest and wisest characters in the barnyard. Besides Pip, Otis usually comes to Miles for advice because he's some with a fatherly figure. I mean he did used to hang around Otis's dad so it makes sense why he's so level headed and took on that fatherly role for Otis. Miles was a really chill guy and his main role was just to keep Otis out of trouble which we know is pretty much impossible and to maintain peace at the barnyard. I absolutely fell in love with most of these characters as a kid growing up watching this show and I would like to know if any of you guys grew up watching this show as well. Back at the barnyard definitely goes down in my book as a a Nickelodeon classic and honestly the movie they made for this show was one of the best movies ever made by Nickelodeon for a cartoon of course but let me know you guys opinion about Back at the Barnyard in the comments down below and also let me know in the comments if you guys felt like this show was underrated or a classic but until next time guys peace